In this video I'm going to show you how I added Bluetooth to an old Sony stereo. So this is the Bluetooth module I'm going to use. It's the KRC86B and it has version 4 Bluetooth. Now there's not a great deal of information on these modules but I understand it runs on anything between about 3.5 and, and 5 volts. The connections around the edge of the module include inputs for volume control and track selection but I won't be using those because that can be done from the smartphone or the tablet. There are also connections on the module for audio input, audio output, power supply and a status LED and the LED is actually supplied with the module. OK, so let's take the case apart and see what's inside. So, now we've got the case apart, we can see what we've got to work with. Down this side is the power supply board, along the bottom is the CD tray mechanism. Up the top here is the RF module for the radio, and that mounts onto the main board. Lower down the main board you've got the two power amplifiers connected to a large heatsink. And if I spin the unit round a little bit, you can see the rear of the tape mechanism. This is a section of the schematic for the main board. And looking at the system controller chip here, I can see that it runs on a 5 volt supply. That's exactly what I need for my Bluetooth module. Now the controller chip itself is probably going to be a bit too small to connect anything to. But if we look a little closer we can see that to the left of the chip there are a couple of capacitors which sit directly across the 5 volt supply. So my plan will be to connect to one of these. So here you can see the two wires that I've soldered across the capacitor which will serve as the power supply to the Bluetooth module. Now, a quick check with the meter is showing me near enough 5 volts, which is fine. However, what I didn't realise was that this 5 volt supply is permanently on, even when the stereo is in standby. That means if I want the Bluetooth module to switch on and off with the stereo, I'm going to need to find some means of triggering it. This is another section of the schematic for the main board. It's the section showing the two power amplifiers, and I spotted something that could be quite useful. Each of the amplifier chips have a pin marked standby. Looking a bit closer then, you can see that the standby signal is switched by a transistor, fed through a 10k resistor to the standby pins of the two amplifier chips. This signal must tell the chips when to turn on and off, so therefore it's ideal for triggering the Bluetooth module. According to the schematic, this signal goes up to 6.9 volts, so I've attached a wire to the standby signal, and I'm getting just under 6.9 volts. So here's a simple sketch of the main board and the Bluetooth module. I now just need to figure out a way of switching the 5 volt supply to the Bluetooth module using the standby signal on the main board. The 0 volt rail on the main board will go directly to the ground connection on the Bluetooth module. The 5 volt rail will go to the Bluetooth module via a transistor. The transistor will act as a switch, turning the supply on and off with the standby signal. Now, because I'm switching the positive supply rail, I'm using a PNP transistor. This will need to be operated by an NPN transistor to ensure that we get the correct switching logic and voltage levels. Now, here's the theory. When the stereo is switched on, the standby signal should go up to 6.9 volts. This will drive current into the base of the NPN transistor and switch it on. With the NPN transistor switched on, current will then flow from its collector to the emitter via the base of the PNP transistor. This in turn will switch the PNP transistor on, and then current will flow from the main board to the Bluetooth module. OK, so I've tidied up the drawing, and I've added on the audio connections. Now the plan is to leave the top and bottom phono connectors as they were, connected directly to the main board. The middle pair, however, I will divert to the Bluetooth module, and then the audio feed from the Bluetooth module will connect back into the main board. So here is the circuit in prototype form. Now with the stereo in standby mode, the Bluetooth module remains off and you can see there's nothing coming from the LED. However, if I now switch the stereo on, my circuit is triggered and the Bluetooth module powers up.
So now we know that the circuit works, we can build it onto a piece of AeroBoard and install it into the stereo. Now, I'm going to feed the audio signal from the Bluetooth module directly into the mainboard where the line input socket currently connects. But I'll also connect the line input socket to the audio input on the module so that it can still be used if required. In order to do this, I've had to desolder the phono connector block and remove it from the mainboard. And now the middle set of pins can be snipped off. I've routed the wires through a conveniently positioned hole on the mainboard and I'm now using hot melt glue to tack them into position along the edge of the board and to keep them tidy. Next, I drilled a hole in the rear panel for the LED, starting with a 1mm pilot hole and then enlarging it to 3mm to take the LED. So as you can see, the LED now sits discreetly alongside the phono sockets. Now on the inside of the rear panel, there are these two unused mountings. So I've cut a piece of variable to fit between them and I'll mount the Bluetooth module and my switching circuit on the variable. So these two lengths of wire on the Bluetooth module will connect straight down through the Vera board to pick up the 5 volt supply from my switching circuit. With everything now connected up, reassembly can commence.
So now it's the moment of truth. Does it work? Well, as you can see, the stereo is currently in standby, and so the Bluetooth module remains off. If I now switch the stereo on and select the line input, the Bluetooth module powers up and the LED begins to flash. This is indicating that it's on, but it's not paired to a device. If I now enable Bluetooth on the tablet, it shows me a list of Bluetooth devices. We can see the KRC86B at the top, so I select that and it very quickly connects. And on the back of the stereo, the LED now remains constantly lit, indicating that it is now paired. The sound quality is amazing, and there's not the slightest hint of any hiss or mains hum. I definitely recommend this Bluetooth module to anyone wanting to upgrade their system. And don't forget, when the Bluetooth module is not paired, it will automatically switch to line input mode, so you can connect your music source through the more conventional line input phono sockets.